Hi student, this is Professor Harmony Kim and this video is the last video in this course. So far we study early Buddhist sutra from Sutanta Pitaka and Abhidhamma Pitaka. In addition to that, we will study Mahayana Sutra today. So after the death of the Buddha, Buddhism received royal support under King Asoka in 3rd BCE, and Buddhism expanded beyond the Indian subcontinent to Central Asia and China. Buddhism continued to spread through the 1st BCE and started to decline from 500 to 650 CE. There are several factors to cause Buddhism to decline. One of them is the northern India was attacked by foreign invaders such as Mongols, Perusian, and Huns. So Buddhism lost patronage and donation, and also religious competition with Hinduism and later Islam brought about religious persecution to monastics and subsequent destruction of a Buddhist institution such as Nalanda. The regionalization of India with other religions weakened the practice of Buddhism and this triggered the Buddhists to leave out of Indian continent toward Central Asia, South Asia, and China. When Buddhism arrived at a different location outside India, Buddhism needed to adapt, modified in accordance to culture or social value of a new region and even require for different interpretation. This gave rise to Mahayana Buddhism. One of the characteristics of Mahayana Buddhism is that Bodhisattva have greater prominence than Arahan. Monastics in early Buddhism highly emphasized on being Arahan for liberation. However, in Mahayana Buddhism, Bodhisattva are more important than Arahan. Bodhisattva have a high potential of being enlightened, but Bodhisattva delay enlightenment to improve the world by unselfish mind, altruistic mind. So Mahayana Buddhism is for majority of people, not just monastics. Early Buddhism stress on meditation. However, in Mahayana Buddhism, emancipation and sainthood are reduced to inferior expedient. Mahayana Buddhism put high value of chanting, ritual, and mantra. Pure Land Buddhism, Zen Buddhism, Tantric Buddhism represent Mahayana Buddhism. Pure Land Buddhism uh, less emphasize on meditation and more belief and devote to Amitabha Buddha. Amitabha is a transcendental being who exists beyond limits of time and space, actually in your own heart. Pure Land Buddhism stress practice rather than study. Jain Buddhism commit less ritual, more engaged in sitting meditation. Pigus following Zen Buddhism are often taught through a Zen master who are expert of meditation and close to reach enlightenment. Tantric Buddhism, most popular division of Vajrayana Buddhism in Tibet. So Tantric Buddhism represent Tibetan Buddhism. Tantric Buddhism include hidden esoteric teachings which were not revealed during the Buddha's life. They have a, a colorful form of a Buddhism such as music, chanting, mantra, 
mudra and mystic diagram, deity yoga, goddess tara, these can be found from Tantric Buddhism. So, for Mahayana Sutra, we will read the book titled Buddhist Sutra, Origin, Development and Transmission. The author is Kogen Mizuno. And if you make this URL copy and paste in a new browser, then you can get electronic version of this book. This is the book you will read for today's lecture. So, uh, when you uh, see this page, and then you just click this download, and once you click download, you can see a drop menu. And then from drop option, you click open in browser, then you can read electronic version of this book. You will not read the uh, entire book. You will read only some pages out of this book, mainly chapter 3, translating the scripture, chapter 7, scriptural controversy, chapter 8, scriptural interpretation and doctrinal distinction. When Buddhism was taken to the area that is present-day Afghanistan and to other Central Asian districts, it was translated into the local languages. So, the scriptures were translated into indigenous languages when Buddhism was transmitted to Central Asia. From Central Asia, Buddhism was transmitted to China by way of Silk Road. Many of the scriptures in Central Asian language, as well as scriptures in various Indic languages, were taken to China and translated in Chinese. So when you read chapter 3, Translating the scripture, um, the first sub-chapter is the earliest Chinese translation. And if you read this five page, you can find the answer of these two questions. Who were made the oldest Chinese translation of Buddhist scripture that are still in existence? So you will find the name of two translators and then the name of those two translators will be the answer to this question. And then who mainly translated Mahayana Sutra? And then from two translators, one translator mainly translated early Buddhist Sutra, and the other translator translate mainly Mahayana Sutra. So you can find the name of that translator mainly focus on Mahayana Sutra. So I suggest you read this page from electronic version of the book and then you can find the answer. The second sub chapter is early other early Chinese translation. What is Koi Buddhism? Okay. So when Buddhism arrived at China Confucianism and Taoism were prevailed social value. Introducing Buddhism in China was regarded as a foreign intrusion rather than approach to attain spiritual liberation. In this context, Buddhism is explained in other vocabulary. And that vocabulary is related to Koi Buddhism. So you read this page and then what is the definition of a Koi Buddhism? And the next question is 
who was a great translator to introduce Buddhism to China by delivering the essential meaning of a Buddhism. So translation is not easy process. You just put word by word translation, that might not be real meaning of a translation. Some essential meaning, underlying message, all these should be packaged together for translation. Therefore, there are many translators, but there are very few translators who deliver essential meaning of a Buddhism. Who is the translator to provide Buddhist principle very well? Also, when you read the book from this page, then they introduce Buddhist councils from first up to sixth council. So you read this page and then you summarize the when the first or second council take place and where was the location and then what kind of activity of each council was held. So you read that and then you can summarize this question. And let's move to chapter 7 in the scriptural controversy. And they introduce a genuine sutra and superior sutra. What are the criteria to distinguish between a genuine sutra and superior sutra? So there's some factors, some characteristics to distinguish two groups of sutra. What are those criteria? You can find those criteria from this page. And when you read this scriptural controversy, and there is one Zen master named Dozen state about Buddhist sutra in his book, The Eye Storehouse of the True Law. And Dozen say about one Buddhist sutra, and he believed that if our eyes are open, we can read and hear sutra in our everyday affairs and in nature. It sounds like a miraculous way. And so uh, I upload some video titled Miracle, and then uh, we can see Dalai Lama, Holiness Dalai Lama, from that uh, video, and then how they interpret miraculous way. So you will watch that. As the Buddha gathered more and more followers, stories spread of his miracles, which mixed the marvelous with the mundane. One story tells how 500 pieces of firewood split at the Buddha's command. In another, a mad elephant charged wildly down the street, forcing everyone to flee. Only the Buddha remained, quietly waiting. The elephant, overcome by the Buddha's radiant kindness, knelt before him, and the Buddha patted his leathery trunk. What is the meaning of miracle? Miracle is something unexpected. I think uh, 100 years ago, jumbo jets, or some of these really computers, or these, I think, uh, in, in their eye, this is how something miracle. Because a miracle is something cannot understand. So now, I think within this century, we may find some new ideas or new facts. So far, we spend all our energy and time for research on matter, not internal world. This 
this skull, small space, but a lot of mysterious things still there. The great field of knowledge is as tiny as the Earth is in the universe. I mean, it's a tiny sort of speck. In, and the, the, the universe is what we don't know. And it will always be that way. This, however, however much we find out, it will still be that way. Because the unknown is vastly, it is, it's, it's, it's unspeakably greater than anything we will ever know. In one of the most storied miracles, the Buddha strode on a jeweled walkway suspended in mid-air, while streams of water spouted and flames flashed from his body, shooting out to the very edge of the universe. And as the Buddha sat on a lotus flower giving his teachings, he replicated himself, filling the sky with multitudes of Buddhas for all to see and wonder. Do we believe that literally? Does it matter whether we believe it literally? What many of those miraculous stories are about is, is the sheer wonder of it all. The very fact that the whole of unknown time and space has led down to this, led to this very moment when we're sitting here talking to, when we are sitting here talking to each other, is utterly miraculous. Sitting here in a room, having had a cup of coffee, having taken it out of a beautiful blue and white porcelain mug, what could be more miraculous than that? Um, everyday life around us is already so implausible and so glorious that what need for further miracles? And that's the teaching of the Buddha. That's the miraculous teaching of the Buddha. Violence, the Buddha taught, always leads to more violence. To the slayer comes a slayer. To the conqueror comes a conqueror. He who plunders is plundered in turn. War was endemic in the Buddha's age, ravaging northeast India again and again. Although kings and their ministers sought his counsel, the Buddha offered no grand political vision. He was powerless to stop the killing and the fighting. Even the men, women, and children of his former kingdom were massacred by a marauding king, forced into pits and trampled by elephants. It was said that the Buddha received the news in silence. Hundreds of them killed. So that day, Buddha was sad. Buddha's human being. So he act like a human being. So sometimes, you see, he also, you see, uh, as they fail, he failed to perform miracle. The Buddha failed, but we, as the Buddha, fail constantly. Uh, and part of our suffering is our, is our failure, our recognition of our failure. Buddhism doesn't argue with reality. There will always be both the potential for awakening in any moment and the potential for incredible damage at any moment. And if we fool ourselves into thinking we're past that, we will do incredible damage. Change, the Buddha said, must come from within. The Buddha starts always with the mind and talks about the violence in the mind and says that violence in the world is a result of violence in the mind. A tree lives on its roots. If you change the root, you change the tree. Culture lives in human beings. If you change the human heart, the culture will follow. Okay, let's continue. 
scriptural controversy, and the subtopic is authenticity of Mahayana Sutra. How are Abhidhamma school be called by Mahayana Buddhist? So Mahayana Buddhism. Then what is the name of Buddhism counterpart to Mahayana Buddhism? And that name of a Buddhist school stick to Abhidhamma Sutra, Abhidhamma Pitaka. Therefore, Mahayana Buddhist call disciples who follow Abhidhamma Pitaka in search search Buddhism. Okay, so what is the name of that Buddhism? You can find the answer by reading this page. Tominaga Nakamoto stated that Mahayana Sutra were not based on Buddha's word. Could his statement be proved? If not, why? So you can think about whether Buddha talk about Mahayana Sutra. Okay. Scholars continue to debate the authenticity of Mahayana Sutra. And think about the Buddhist sutra can be understood not only intellectual way, but also maybe some practice and actual faith might require to fully understand the sutra. So first, you have to think about whether Mahayana sutra is based on Buddha's word or not. Can this statement be easily proved? If not, why? Why intellectual approach cannot provide enough evidence to prove that Mahayana Sutra was not based on the Buddha's word? Okay. You, if you read this page, you can also find the answer. Early modern controversy. Did Shakyamuni expound Mahayana teaching again? If not, find and write the three reasons asserted by Dr. Muragami. So the background of this question is uh, geographical and temporal separation between the Buddhist homeland of India and China give rise to modification of Buddhist teachings. A question has been raised as to Mahayana Sutra can be regarded as the authentic teachings by the Buddha. So that is the background to bring out this question. Could Mahayana Sutra be regarded as the Buddha's teaching from the standpoint of a Buddhist doctrine? What could be two reasons proposed by Dr. Maeda? So, you can get the answer first here. Did Shakyamuni expound Mahayana teaching? Then, what is Mahayana Sutra? All Mahayana Sutra can be what? Fake? Because they are not authentic Sutra? When you look at Mahayana Sutra from the standpoint of Buddhist doctrine, Still, can you find some Buddhist doctrine from Mahayana Sutra? Then, is it worthwhile to take Mahayana Sutra as Buddha's teaching, indirectly Buddha's teaching? So, think about that question. And then, uh, Dr. Maeda proposed two clear reasons how he interpret uh, this question. So interpreting the sutra, and then there's uh, uh, Panchao. What is Panchao? Panchao is kind of a method, Chinese method of organizing and classifying scripture based on certain criteria. So you will find what is the definition of a Panchao. Okay. So from this page, you can easily find the answer. 
And what are the five methods to examine the Lotus Sutra in order to figure out the value and historical position of the Sutra? So if you read the page, I think 143, they introduce five methods to examine Lotus Sutra. So what is the meaning of a title, this Lotus? And then what is the goal or purpose of this sutra? And then what is essential underlying teaching of this sutra? So there is a five method to examine Lotus Sutra. And then what are those five methods? You can find the answer by reading this page. And then who is the first Chinese patriarch to establish Jain Buddhism? or Chan Buddhism, or Son Buddhism. In very famous, the first patriarch in coming from India. Okay? And very famous name, I think some of them already know about that, but if you do not know, by reading this page, you can find the answer. So I upload 14 questions in relation to this book, Buddhist Sutra book. And there are 14 questions asked to the students in this slide presentation. You, you will not solve entire 14 questions because you are very busy of preparing for final research paper. So I will give you only choose two questions out of 14 questions, and then you can submit uh, two questions with answers until June 22nd. Also, June 22nd is the due date for your final research paper. Okay. So, June 22nd, you will submit final research paper as well as answers of two questions from today's lecture. So make uh, make only single file. So this single file include your research paper and then after research paper the following page you write down two questions and answer and then you will submit them all together in single file. So this is the format for your final research paper and assignment of today's lecture. So here's, and I'm not sure this is some, uh, I usually teach it two semester institute, so maybe this is spring, then please correct them, spring. and. What kind of, uh, what is the name of a sutra you work for final research paper and your name and then you will um, write, you will make a research paper in 12 font size, time rule normal and double space and you have to write down at least three pages. What you have to write down in your research paper, I already provided information last week. And then I will go over that a little bit later. Anyway, the first page starts from this head and then you start to write down your research paper at least three pages. Some students might over three pages, it's okay. Maybe some students write down four and a half a page. Then once you complete research paper, then mm, the next page Suppose if you write down four and a half a page, and then the fifth page, you write down two questions from today's lecture, and also you include the answer. So I can evaluate your attendance over today's lecture, and also uh, you submit your final lecture together so that I can grade them. Final research paper. Yes, I already introduced this last week and your favorite sutra, you choose them from a five Nikaya. 
I limit the research paper in the five Nikaya. If you want to go by Abhidhamma Pitaka for your research, it's fine with me, but it will take a very long time to understand the sutra because Abhidhamma Pitaka is quite complicated. And what you have to include for your research paper is to summarize the sutra with the background, what kind of a background, location, where these discourses were expounded, and who are the audience, and what is the content of a sutra, and what kind of Buddhist doctrine you can find from that sutra. Also, you add information, add pros and cons of those sutra by reflecting the idea of a sutra in modern world, in current modern world. There's a space between in and current. And also, if you were one of the audience when the sutta was spoken, what would you ask to the Buddha? As I said again, the final report must be at least three pages, and you have to use your own word. You know where about plagiarism. If you want to cite others' opinion, you can use quotation for direct citation or you can use your own word for indirect quotation. And again, the font size and double space. At least you have to write down three. So if you go by five page, that's okay. So today, this is all for today's lecture. And uh, from now on, what you have to do is you go back to URL, web address, copy and paste, and then open new window, and then you pull out electronic version of the book, and then try to read. It's very worthwhile reading that book in terms of a Mahayana Sutra. So uh, from now on, you will work uh, by yourself. and. Uh, also, since you are very busy of making final research paper, I'm not going to load more information on this video. Okay. So, um, we, in this course, we study several kinds of uh, Buddhist sutra, mainly from early Buddhism, and, and today we will go over Mahayana Sutra. So, please read the book and then you will get more information from the book. Thanks for watching my video, and then this is the last lecture in this course. Bye.